in the cabin, one on the left and one on the right. And the bed holes was made, built into the, the barrel of the boat, you might say. And it was lovely being in bed and listening to the lap of the water. And you drew a little curtain across when you went to bed, you see. And um, at the far end, far end they called it, some people, if they will say the mother wasn't able to go boating, if they were expecting a happy event, you see, well, she stayed at home. Well, they used to get a mate. There used to be plenty of men willing to go. Well, he lived forward, but he used to come to turn in to have his meals, but he slept forward. And uh, you used to, they used to like young ones, like I was then, to get off and go and turn the bridges off, them swing bridges that you see. And we, um, and we used to go ahead, I used to go ahead with my granddad and get the locks ready, as they called it. Apley Bridge Lock was a very deep lock, it still is. I've climbed them, uh, them gates above once, and my grandma said, God bless us, we'll be knocking in a cab yet. She used to be terrified, but my granddad had showed me how to climb up the lock gates. My father were down in the cabin, he were having his bed to stop. He said, now, love, be careful, thou well enough kettle on, and thou better frame and start pumping, for I think we've sprung the leaf, and I wish I'd never gone booting, me living for to seek. Soon after that, with an awful shock, we met for mother ship, and that were out to mother, he were on a summer school trip. He shouted out, how did you clown? I forget to know how did I? And we met stem up in the middle of cups, by gum, but I get a clown. We ended up with pawn shop, and our crew went to walk in jail. And I'm the only survivor who's lived to tell a tale. I have some happy memories and bad ones too of ours, but I'll never forget when I was first met on board of the Taliban. If I'd have been a man, I'd have been a boatman, because I, I liked it, you see. Oh, it was nice. It was grand. The boat people was a race of their own, you know. You never heard of a any boat people ever getting married in the register office. Always a church wedding. Nearly all the all the boat men was musical. And we used to have a little concertina. And we used to sing, uh, uh, sit on the tiller, you know. And we used to play the concertina. And my father was real, real comic, you know. And he'd get his concertina out, perhaps sometimes fiddle, he could play an instrument. And he'd play to the clap of the horse. And it start da 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 de da 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 de and told us we'd go, mm -hmm. you know, with his old head nodding and to the time of the book, and then uh, and music, and then my father would wink, and he'd set off into an Irish jump. <laughs> the two up and two down till he got him to step again. He was up again that way. <clears throat> and they used to spend the time when they was tied up, you know, sitting on one another's decks. Women would all go to one boat for their gas and the men would uh, have a bit of a natter. And, and they used to, they could all clog dance, you know. 
and that was set up to then I come to the this step. Oh, of course I can do that step. Well, he'd try, and he'd master it. And that's, I think, that's how the Lancashire Cloaks dancing really started, you see. <laughs> pieces with their feet. My father won the Don Lino Cook for club dancing. Don Lino was a great club dancer, but he wasn't a boatman, you know. sober clothing. When they were uh, a petticoat and a flannel petticoat and uh, then they flock and then we had a pinny on and it was stiff with starch and we used to have a clean pinny on every day to go to school and then um, they were beautifully ironed, beautifully ironed. I think one mother was against the other which could have the children look at nurses. And then for Sunday, well, of course, we had our boots on on a Sunday, and we had a velvet frock on. They were very proud of their figures, was the women. All had washed waists. They used to wear tight-fitting uh, black bodices with the uh, buttons, and uh, they used to hold their breath. Well, I'm talking about my family, and I think they were all the same. And then um, they used to hold their breath while you buttoned the fronts with the buttons. See, and they always had three buttons opened at the top, and they had a, what they called a habit shirt. They never had no bare neck uh, show, and I don't know what they do now as they come back and saw all these plunging bosoms as there is knocking them out. And they wore uh, quite a lot of underclothing, and they used to wear stays. Not the corsets wasn't known, not amongst the boat people. And uh, they used to have them laced up at the back. And we used to be sent to the draper's shop for a Tupney stays lace. And they were kind of stays laces, what the footballers used to tie their boots up with. The footballers don't use them now, do they? And you used to pay fortunes for a whalebone. And it fitted right down the front and that kept them straight. Kept the figure in order and it was about three inches wide and 12 inches long, and they fitted right down front of the, um, of the corset. And they were bent a special way, like the woman's figure was. I had a whalebone uh, out of my grandma's stairs for a long, long time, and then it did the disappearing act. And the women, you know, used to sit on the stern decks. They were all tied together. And um, they used to knit to uh, gamses, then uh, what you call pullovers. And they were marvellous, uh, marvellous bits of work. They were knit on four needles and not a seam in them. And all the gussets were knit in. And they, fin they started at the bottom and they finished up at the neckline and they fit beautifully. And the men used to wear them. And they used to wear corduroy trousers pushed and they called them. And at the bottom was a little slit about an inch with two little pearl buttons on. Then was the night trousers. But they, uh, they wore fushed and just the same, but they'd always a nice pair of fushed and for when they went to shore on these, uh, on the navy blue ganses. All one colour, navy blue. And round the neck they had a little silk handkerchief with, uh, done in a sailor's knot, with the ends showing, and little pink rosebuds, or blue, or whatever, took their eye, but they were floral, 
Oh, on the other, always wore a cap. <laughs> Postlewaite, his name was. So I can remember him now. And he used to go round and tell us all were any sales as was on. And when we used to have a mug sale twice a year, and he used to go on, he used to go around every street with bells, and us children used to follow him, copying him, and then he chased us. And, uh, and I was looking through some of my bits and pieces, and I come across Bill Bellman as was written with Teddy Ashton. It's got Paul Bellman. Now you talk to Tom Brown, being as soft as a cow, but I'll warrant Paul Bellman, he's daft a bit far. The scarce a day goes over but he's pooing his face, barking and barking, out and down place. To be day, snuffy bet, at Bum Bailey's it shop, getting ready to sell her bees ums and pop. And among other sundries with Paul Woman's cat, and I'm blessed if that crackpot didn't cry about that. He cried when Dick Whiteside sold out of his farm. I met him the same day with his bell on his arm. And I denied word he were crying so loud. Did things belong in what were bound to be sold? Oh, no, Jemmy said. Crying's part of me trade. That cry too, wouldn't it? If they were paid. I I said, there's no telling what one may to do. I know I've cried a herd or a honey in a two. A day or two after, I were walking down the street and a bit of a mirror when who should I meet but Jemmy with his belly. And then I told him I could find him a job. I told him I'd lost one at Childer, our Bob. So I give him a paper on what it to say and a couple of shillings to cry, so he went on his way. First corner he come to, he up with his belly. Tongue tingle, tongue tingle, tongue tingle, tongue dull. Lost yesterday, this time tomorrow. As pretty a baby as ever were born. Cheeks like red roses and bonny blue in. And it mouthed all with Rachel last time it was seen. It's clutching its teeth and has very sore gums. And it's getting into the habit of sucking its thumbs. Now then what finds it can keep it, cause nobody will care. Because then what's lost it has lots more to spare. Here there were some rare laughing when Jemmy had done. Women first screamed again without it such fun. But Jemmy with that note, he threw papa on the floor. And he vowed he'd never cry all lost children no more. But ever since that day he keeps out on his seat. But now and then I drops across him at street. And I always tell him if he wants a job, he can always go on and cry for our bed. They was very superstitious. I'm speaking from the people that I have come in contact with, our my uncles and aunts and all that, you see. And uh, they used to keep uh, Christmas religiously. Christmas Eve, the children was bathed, the rear plaited, with no curlers those days, and the boys bathed and put to bed, and then the stockings was filled, ready for Father Christmas. And the men used to, used to take it in turns, different, uh, different times, and we'll say we had it at our house. Well, my mother used to put a fire in the parlour, and uh, she used to make a, a whole pile of mince pies, beef butters, and, uh, and she used to the men used to go in the parlour and they used to play, play three card loo. It was a card game with three cards and they played for poultry for Christmas, uh, for the Christmas dinner. And it was there. Uh, they used to go and pick their own when they'd won it. So they couldn't have nothing fresher than that, did they? And then the old woman used to cry when we saw it, uh, 
ducks going away. She'd been feeding them, you see, from ducklings. And some of them would have a gander. But ganders were a bit nasty, they used to.